Hello, my name is Ed Chapman, and this slideshow is going to focus on levels of organization, which is one of the characteristics of life that scientists use to decide whether or not matter is living. Organization is best approached at a level, and there are many levels of organization that scientists study matter at. The first two levels of organization, the atomic and molecular, are not alive. They're not complicated enough to have the characteristic we call life. It isn't until you get to the cellular level that we start encountering living organisms. Chemistry focuses on chemicals, which are made of molecules and atoms and elements and all the different ways that they interact, but certainly not part of being alive. The cellular level is the first level of organization that we consider being alive. We're going to take each one of these in turn. Now, before we move on, the last two levels of organization include materials that are also not alive. So we're combining the biotic and the abiotic at the ecosystem and biosphere level, but more on that later. First of all, the atomic level of organization is based on atoms, and we have here a picture of an atom with a nucleus made of protons and neutrons surrounded by a cloud of electrons, which are moving at a certain distance from the nucleus. They don't really orbit like planets do, but it's okay to think about, think about it that way for right now. The next level of organization is the molecular level and you get molecules by combining atoms. For example, in this water molecule, we're combining one atom of oxygen with two atoms of hydrogen represented here by these blue spheres. They're held together by chemical bonds that produce a structure called a molecule. And the water molecule is very important in biology. The next level of organization is the cellular level. And I'm quite sure all of you have seen a picture or a diagram of a plant cell at some point in school. And as you can see, there's a lot going on on the inside. There are definitely areas that are outside. We have compartments and folded things and lots of different structures inside here all labeled for you. But this level of organization is the first level that is alive, able to reproduce, able to pass on its traits using DNA, having all the characteristics of life. Our next level of organization is the tissue level. And what makes a tissue more complicated than a cell is you have many cells all shaped the same and built the same way, specialized to do the same job. For example, this slide here shows you many muscle cells working together to form a muscle tissue. And of course, the function of muscle tissue is to contract and to relax and to allow movement. So this is our example of a tissue. The next level of organization is the organ level, and you get organs by combining tissues. For example, this human heart contains many different tissues. For example, we have muscle tissue, we have fatty tissue colored yellow, we have blood vessel tissue, we have veins and we have arteries, all, and we have nerves feeding and controlling this, this entire structure. So the organ level combines many different tissues into a more complex structure that performs a more complex job, for example, to pump blood. The next level of organization is the organ system level. And this is where you combine different organs to build an even more complicated level of organization. Here we have a a diagram of a human digestive system containing the organs that, that are used for digestion. Most of you are probably familiar with the stomach and the intestines, but also included in the digestive system is the liver and the gallbladder. All these organs work together to digest and process our food. The next level of organization is the organism level. And the organism level is an entire individual. For example, this giant sequoia. This sequoia, as all plants, are built from different organ systems made of organs. Like You might not have thought about this before, but we have leaves, and we have stems, and we have a trunk, and we have wood, and we have photosynthetic tissue, we have water carrying tissue. Uh, down in the ground we have roots. All these different organs and organ systems combine to build one organism that functions as an individual. The next level of organization is the population level, and this is where you combine more than one organism. For example, these monarch butterflies, which are in the process of migrating, are combined here in a population. We have males and females all living together in the same place at the same time, and they're all the same species. 
So you have a population if you have all the same species in the same place at the same time. That's the hallmark of a population. And all these individuals have the ability of interbreeding. That's the definition of a population. Our next level of organization is the species level. And I thought a good example for species would be the panda bear. Uh, pandas are native to most of China, but today they're restricted to very small areas in the mountains of China where they still have all the things that they need to survive. We also have pandas in other places on the planet. We have pandas in zoos. So we can say that the species that we call the giant panda has a population, an original population, left over here in China, but also smaller populations spread around the world in zoos. So to build the species, we have to combine populations. Now obviously, the population of panda in ch pandas in China can no longer interbreed with the pandas that are, for example, at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. So even though they belong to the same species, they've been separated into different populations. It's interesting to note here that populations can go extinct. Okay, and extinction, when that happens with all the populations of a species, then that species goes extinct. So extinction is something that happens at the population and species level. It starts at the population level, and if it moves to extinct the entire species, then they're gone. The next level of organization is the community level. And you build communities by combining populations of different organisms or by combining different species. For example, in this picture from the African grassland, we see wildebeest here in the front, lots and lots of these large grazing animals. We have some zebra here, another species of grazing animal. And off here in the distance, I know it's very hard to see, but we have a predator, a lion. So the lion, the zebra, the wildebeest, plus the grass that they're feeding on form a community. And communities are studied in terms of how these different species interact with each other. Obviously, we've got food chains going on here. The wildebeest and the zebra are grazing or eating the grass. And of course, populations of lion and cheetah and leopard are, of course, feeding on the animals. So the community level of organization is where you start getting interactions like predator prey and food webs and food chains. The next level of organization, I'm going to bring back the population, is the ecosystem level. And ecosystems are built from communities combined with the abiotic features of their environment. For example, this community, this African grassland community, also includes the rain, the light, and the soil. Now, rain, light, and soil are not alive. They're abiotic. So if you combine the abiotic plus the biotic communities, you get to the level of organization that we call an ecosystem. Now, if you study ecosystems from a geographic point of view, which means you study different ecosystems that are limited by their geography, they're, they're in certain places, you can call them biomes. But for this class, ecosystem and biome are pretty much the same thing. And you've heard of these before. There are desert ecosystems, and there are ocean ecosystems, and forest ecosystems. I mean, we could go on and on. And we could also talk about deserts and oceans and forests as being in certain geographic areas. And then we'd refer to them as biomes. And finally, our last level of organization is the biosphere. Now, the biosphere is the entire planet. But it's the part of Earth that contains living things. So if you go high into the atmosphere, where flying insects and birds and pollen and little bits and pieces of bacteria and things like that are floating, you have the top of the biosphere. And if you go all the way underground to the depth of the, the lowest depth where you can find living things living in the soil and in cracks and rocks and in water that's underground, you reach the bottom of the biosphere. The dis so the distance from the top somewhere in the atmosphere to the bottom somewhere underground makes up what we call the biosphere. And as far as we know, the Earth is the only biosphere in the universe. We have not found living things anywhere else. That might change one day. There we have it, all the levels of organization. So let's review the list. Starting with cells, all living things have this characteristic of having cells, and cells are organized. And organization can be studied in the levels that we talked about earlier. So 
Include this in your study, in your review of the characteristics of life, and remember that all living things are organized in some way, from the very simple, like a cell, to the very complex, like biospheres. Thank you, and I hope this, hope this, this uh, slideshow helps you understand what we're studying.